Hi everyone, so today I'll be showing you the ZD8911B 300 watt lead free solder pot. So I just got this on eBay brand new, I think it was about £40 or something, and the solder which goes in it costs much more than the unit itself. I luckily managed to get five sort of 900 gram lead free solder bars. Uh, these huge things like this. I got five of them for £60, which is really good, but uh, bargains like that are fairly rare. You might, usually these will probably be £60 each, if not much more. So that's the issue with these, they're very, very expensive to fill, and it needs about one and a half of those bars to fill it, so it's, it gets expensive fast. Uh, However, it's very, very good for removing stuff from circuit boards quickly. Safety, obviously, do not get water anywhere near it. If water splashes on this, the solder will just spurt everywhere, causing injury. Wear eye protection and probably wear gloves as well. Okay, so with the unit set to about 360 Celsius, which is a sort of reasonable temperature for lead free solder. I'm just going to take this old power supply here and just start removing stuff from it. So, what I did was I just applied a bit of flux to the pins on this capacitor. I'm going to just sit it on top of here and attempt to remove it. So, just going to put this right down on here. Let's see what happens. Just sort of waiting for the thing to come loose. There we go, nice and easy. Nice big 400 volt, 470 microfarad capacitor. Uh, what will we target next? Uh, probably this little flyback transformer here. So let's see how that goes. Need to be a bit more tricky at the best of times. Yeah, unfortunately there's too much else in the way which should prevent me from actually getting into it, so what we'll do is we'll just try it on one of these MOSFETs or whatever they are. Yep, easy. And then if anything like that happens you can just sort of brush it aside like that and we'll get the next one. Okay, I'll fold it up a little bit more, so let's try this little flyback transformer again. There we go. Defeated pretty easily, I think. I don't even know what that's for. Gate drive or something. Who knows. Right, so there's two large flyback transformers on the board. Let's try and see how we get on with those. That's quite a struggle, but we got it off. Now, these, if you sort of heat them up nicely, you can actually soften the varnish and pull them apart. And I intend to rewind some of these and just make a sort of crappy isolated DC to DC converter so that uh, I could just run 12 volt stuff off the 48 volt battery bank I've got which can also go up to 60 volts so uh, 60 volts is actually enough to make you feel it or even kill you in the worst case scenario so I prefer that to be isolated so we'll see if we can get this one yep, pretty easy And IGBTs are always good to keep, um, if indeed those are, well this clearly isn't, that's probably just a diode or something, but if you ever get IGBTs, Schottky diodes, things like that, they're all good for repairing solar inverters, 
because quite often they can blow MOSFETs and stuff or IGBTs or even power supply repair and it's good for that too small electrolytic capacitors I suppose it's good to have them my only issue we've got with this board is there's copper bars on the bottom which are just kind of getting in the way so I'll just try the single phase rectifier here there we go So the most worthwhile thing that we got was these IRFP460Z MOSFETs and these have a continuous drain current of 13 amps when the device is at 100 Celsius and to make them good as new just dip them in the solder and then these could be easily used in something else and these two legged things here are probably just uh, shot K rectifier diodes in a TO247 package so uh, those definitely come in handy too for making power supplies and stuff 